So a little while ago, maybe about a month ago, we did a video on the Framework laptop. And honestly, it had some pretty good reviews. However, I just wanted to take a chance to kind of double down, not double down, <laughs> to kind of come back to it and talk about what's changed in my perspective. First off, shout out to you guys who were actually pretty positive or even neutral and had some back and forth with me in the comments. I really love that interaction and you know, I've been schooled a couple of times and I'd like to think I helped a few of you guys with anything else. So, you know, keep it up and try not to leave angry comments because now the framework community just sounds like the YouTube community. So to be frank, I'm still not a fan of this model. It's just not doing it for me. I like the laptop as a concept and I like the company for what they're trying to do. But this particular Gen 1, it's not really for me. It's kind of like with a car, how they say never buy the first year of a new model. I think that applies here as well. You know, it's it's like buying a year one Tesla, for example, like panel gaps and catching on fire and all kinds of nonsense. I don't think it'll catch on fire, but there's already been a few issues that have been showing up in the batch ones. For example, there's an issue when you take it apart that you can short something with the track touchpad and they shipped, I think some tape or something. It's in like Linus's video, a little piece of tape to tape it down. Or there's been issues with the thermal paste. I think there's something wrong with the viscosity from the factory and it kind of doesn't stay where it should and you end up with some laptops overheating. Some of them have intermittent buzzing in the headphone jack and so on and so on. Now I know this because I've been doing my research and I have been all over these guys forums. I'm actually a pretty like popular poster over there surprisingly. Like I've got a ton of likes or whatever that means. Because again, I don't want this to fail. I try and offer advice, try and offer support, and I try and just help out the average guy because like you guys think or want, this is supposed to be a laptop that's more accessible to everybody. So there's plenty of first time people getting into this that you know, may not be super knowledgeable about Linux, for example, or you know, are tra still trying to figure out how to properly take it apart. Like there's one guy that somehow short it or brick the laptop putting a screen protector on. I, I need to check up on that because that baffles me and that shouldn't happen. <laughs> so hopefully that guy's all right. But even then the comments were pretty helpful and I, I like that. The community has been pretty good there because we all want this to work. So my biggest problem was still the finances. How is this company going to stay afloat? Because again, you look at the raw numbers and you're like, where is your big money? Where's your profit? There's still no marketplace and I can't tell if there's any good margins or not. Well, fortunately, and part of the reason why I'm putting this video out is Linus came out and announced his investments and he kind of gave a bit more insight into what's going on there. Even in his video, he talked about how practically impossible it is for a company to kind of just come out and make a product and then take the profits from that and try and make more product. He talked about the kind of weight stretches out the time frame, and you end up with a lot of idle time. So having some big time investors hopping in and kind of helping you get that initial capital to start selling the first product, to keep your lights on, to fund R&D. That's what I was worried about. And I don't know if I conveyed that well enough or not, but that was like the number one problem. Because again, I want a V2. I'll probably buy a V2 if they address some of my concerns. My other big complaint was performance and kind of the marketing around it. Now again, I get it that not everybody, or honestly most people, aren't doing video rendering, video editing, and you know, extreme gaming on a thin and light laptop. Honestly, I don't even know what gaming would look like on that really tall screen. Like, it's like old school, like with, uh, with the black bars. Uh, no black bars though, just your surroundings. But I mean, obviously this laptop with that screen ratio is designed kind of for uh, media consumption, well, not even video. I don't know, it's it's good for coding, for web browsing, for seeing a million Reddit comments at once, which is not bad. I have mixed opinions about that kind of screen ratio for one of my laptops, but it does kind of set the tone for what that laptop is designed for. However, I still do not like the idea of a four core, eight thread CPU in 2021. I, again, I get that you guys aren't clamoring for giant, big, you know, Cinebench scores with your laptops. I get that. 
I still stand by the whole four core eight thread platform being underpowered. Because again, this laptop isn't just about upgradability, it's about longevity. And I still don't think that that's enough. A four core eight thread laptop is okay right now, probably good right now. But again, this is the final Intel platform that's DDR4, at least for mobile. Desktop might be a little weird. So this is the end of the line. Now, if you wanna upgrade later to an Alder Lake motherboard, which again, I think Alder Lake's gonna be four big cores and like six little core. It, it's a weird architecture, but you're gonna have more than four cores, hands down. Not only do you need to buy a new main board, but you have to buy new RAM and DDR5 is not gonna be cheap at launch, especially with everything going on with computer components. You gotta keep that in mind. Because the big thing is that if you're worried about e-waste, the biggest way to reduce it is to just not buy more stuff. So you buy something that'll last you a long time. I think someone mentioned it was the Fairphone people, where someone says, well, I don't wanna upgrade yet, my current phone's fine. They said that the best way to reduce e-waste is to use the phone you already have. Same thing with this kind of laptop. You, you wanna hold on to this for five, six, seven years, but replacing everything is already gonna feel awful in two years. Thread count really does matter. You can ask the guys who bought i5s back in Sandy Bridge and the guys who bought i7s back in Sandy Bridge. The i7s are feeling a lot better right now. I did kind of lay in the framework for calling it a high performance mainboard and high performance CPU. And honestly, that might not be entirely their fault. I might've been a little too much on them when I should have directed some of that anger towards Intel. Because Intel's gonna market it as that and I can't really blame you for marketing something as what Intel says. My guess, here is that, well, one, this is the best Intel can do for uh, 10 nanometer mobile parts under like 35 watts. This is the best U SKU you can get is the highest SKU framework offers. I don't know if that's because of an architecture issue or because of yield issues with their 10 nanometer process, but I feel like they didn't go with Ryzen and they went with this instead because one, it's hard to get a hold of Ryzen. It's a very in-demand thing, and TSMC is just like, I can't handle all these orders, guys. And, you know, Thunderbolt, which nothing really has come up about Thunderbolt except for external GPUs. But if you're doing gaming with an external GPU, you're gonna hate having four cores. So you win some, you lose some. Maybe Thunderbolt will give you some future, um, future proofing or something. I don't know, nothing's really come out of it yet. I mean, it's not even certified for it. And all I really know about Thunderbolt is you can kind of get network adapters, you can get storage, and you can get, you know, external um, graphics cards slash PCIe slots. It's not really a platform that's been utilized to its fullest. So I don't know what they're gonna do. Maybe they can move that forward. The other thing is that I think that they went with this platform because they're getting it on the cheap. It's kind of like with the Nintendo Switch where they went with a really mediocre Nvidia chip. It's because Nvidia had a ton of them lying around and Nintendo is like, yeah, I could use them, but you know, maybe you cut me a deal and I'll, I'll buy them off of you. I think that's the situation here is that these parts were cheap because every other big OEM is already ordering up all of the new Alder Lake chips. Because again, these are a small time company and I've had you guys mention that before too. Well, they're a small company and you know, so that's probably the issue there. It's just, this is what they could get a hold of. It's kind of like a little Caesar's pizza. You know, it's hot and it's ready. Is it good? It's hot and it's ready. And that's, that's how I feel about Tiger Lake. Not necessarily the whole laptop. So, you know, framework is just kind of stuck being, I'm limited by the technology of my time as you know, that one movie said. <laughs> Or is that Intel? I'm limited by the technology of my time. So then let's move on to expectations. Like I said, I've been going back and forth with you guys in my comment section, and I've been all over the framework forums. And everybody's expectations are pretty high. I get that mine were kind of high too, which is why I was kind of like laying into them a bit, because I want you guys to have a reasonable expectation for what's going to come out and what's going to happen moving forward. I don't want another cyberpunk where everyone thinks it's going to be the perfect greatest thing and then everyone's let down when you get a, okay, the well, cyberpunk was kind of mediocre at launch, but it's an okay game now. 
decent game, I'd even say. It's expectations. It's why there's no Half-Life 3 and there'll probably never be a Half-Life 3. There's no way that game will live up to its own hype. It just can't happen. So first and foremost, this, I've had a few people mention, this is not gonna be a business or corporate laptop. No Fortune 500 company or anything of a significant size is really going to purchase these. You may talk about repairability and ease of that saving money, but I'm gonna tell you something right now. Big companies are actually really bad about saving money sometimes. They'll, they'll lay off a thousand people, but then they'll spend hilarious amounts of money for just weird airline flights and last minute things. Like, big business is kind of a funny thing there. When a big business buys a computer or a laptop, they're not necessarily concerned with repairability. They care about it being cheap and it being reliable you know, and reputable. There's a reason why whenever you check out any school or library, you see, you know, a thousand of the same Dell Optiplexes. They all look the same and they're somehow all five years out of date, no matter what year it is, but they're cheap and they're pretty dang reliable and durable. You know, we've thrown one off a roof. I've heard people talk about turnaround time to do a repair. Well, because I have an IT guy on hand, you know, he can repair the laptop pretty quickly and get that employee back up and running. But that's not really what happens with a larger company. They have a few on hand that are spares or the new models. And when your computer breaks as an employee, they just have you ship it back or hand it in and they just hand you or ship you a new one. And then they take that old one and they throw it in the shredder if it's out of warranty or they deal directly with the OEM they bought it from. There isn't a delay because someone needs to wait on a main board to come in or anything like that. It's just trade it away and move on to the next one and then write all of them off on your taxes so you don't pay any taxes that year. Let's not get into that. <laughs> the thing too is the warranty. A large company will offer you a pretty good warranty if you feel like paying for it. And, you know, you'll get next day or even sometimes same day repairs if it's for something important like a server or whatnot. No, I don't wanna see a frame server. Servers are pretty modular and repairable. The warranty with this kind of laptop is you, the user. Now, if you look at it from the perspective of a large business, are you really going to trust your IT guy or your IT department that's already underfunded and overworked? Seriously, companies seem to hate their IT guys, even though it's what keeps their websites and their business running. IT is the department that doesn't get money to do any upgrades or preemptive anything, but then gets absolutely just beaten down the second anything breaks or there's any downtime. Not even Jurassic Park could survive underfunded IT. And then think about the stereotypical IT guy you've seen at a school or at a business. Do you really trust him taking apart a thousand laptops and putting them back together? Trust me, I was that guy. And by that I mean I was a student and they had me taking apart people's computers. So the whole warranty and service contracts makes a lot more sense for a business, and this is not a business laptop. It may be sleek, it may be nice, but this is something the IT guy himself would use, not the rest of the company. The, the drones aren't gonna be using frameworks, they're gonna be using dollar store HPs or something. And then in the comments, the other thing I hear a lot of is Apple. You know, oh, it's better than an Apple, it's better than this, at least it's not a MacBook. I really don't feel like that's a genuine or an argument in good faith. You're comparing basically the worst of the worst with the best of the best. You're, you're ignoring everything else in between. You know, there's tons of historical references, including the one everyone thinks of when you talk about something bad. Well, at least I'm not, you know, what was it, Goodwin's Law or something like that? You get what I'm saying. Comparing them to everyone else and ignoring the 90% in the middle just isn't really fair. Now, I've had at least a couple of people say, maybe this will make Apple change their ways. And I'm gonna stop you right there and tell you, Apple does not care about you. It doesn't care about me. Honestly, it doesn't really care about anybody. Apple's gonna do what Apple wants. Remember, these are the guys that got rid of the headphone jack for no good reason, and the ones who took away fingerprint scanners, and then like six months later, everyone's wearing masks and face ID is worthless. Why are you getting rid of features? You can put a fingerprint scanner on a button or something. You know. Apple doesn't care. People buy Apple products because of status, because of simplicity. Honestly, the software's pretty good if you're not a technical person. Because of, you know, build quality. Apple products are 
pretty stylish and they're pretty well built. That whole machined unibody chassis with the MacBooks, it's pretty nice. Now that means I have to use an Apple product, which I don't, but I can admit from afar, that's it's pretty nice. Now I'm not saying that the framework is ugly by comparison, but you know, there's sacrifices to be made. That machined aluminum unibody chassis that that MacBook has, that looks so good. Well, it comes at a cost. One, it's glued together, and two, there's, what, what panels are you gonna take apart when it's one solid just chunk of aluminum? Framework looks pretty nice, especially considering that I can rip that thing apart with my bare hands. No, with a screwdriver. Even if the framework looked as good and tried to get some of that status behind it, we've already seen before that it doesn't matter how nice of a product you make, it's not an Apple product. How many people do you know with an Apple Watch that have it just because it's an Apple Watch? They don't even do anything with it. You know, no matter what you try and do, Samsung, for example, can't compete, even though they make very innovative products sometimes, like the Fold and the, the Flip, which is just a different Fold. It doesn't matter what you do. Apple is in a league of its own. If you care about their kind of product, and most importantly, it doesn't matter what anybody else does, you're not gonna run OS X. And if my workflow and my company needs OS X, I can't go anywhere else. You can't even do the Hackintosh thing anymore because Apple's moved on to M1. And now there's just nothing. You can't even cheat. So this isn't comparable to an Apple system. And they're not gonna change their ways because of what framework does. That's just not gonna happen. And I hate to break it to you guys. I would love for Apple to make some easier to work on stuff because again, they make nice stuff, I just hate it. Then let's talk about the mainstream, you know, the average Joe. Again, this isn't going to replace everybody else's laptop. I'm gonna tell you right now that you may get a large, a chunk, you may get a chunk of that general population market share, but by and large, most people do not care or want to upgrade or repair their machines. Maybe upgrade, but they're not doing it themselves. If they did, Geek Squad would not exist. Hands down, it's not hard to run an HDMI cable from your box to your TV. It's not, but people still pay Geek Squad to do it. Same kind of thing. Desktops are modular and repairable. People still just take it into Geek Squad. It's not hard to change out a graphics card. I can find a million videos on it. It's, it's not difficult to repair desktops, but again, they just go to Geek Squad or mom and pop IT or repair shops. It's, it's just like getting an oil change on your car. It's like two clips to get the thing down and then a, a twisty boy and like an Allen key or a socket. It's, it's not hard, but people are afraid of breaking their stuff. So, you know, the average person isn't gonna do that. They care about looks, they care about thinness and battery, and consumers, they care about cost. It's why AMD has still a terrible reputation. How many people do you know paid sub $300 for like an A10 APU that AMD was selling for, you know, discount bargain bin prices, and then they go, a AMD is slow, I can't buy a Ryzen chip. Well, yeah, you bought the cheapest thing on the market. It's like buying a Celeron laptop, it, it, it's bad. And that's what consumers care about. There's a reason why even with phones that they switched from replaceable batteries and SD slots and all that cool stuff to glued together or solid phones. And there wasn't a huge outcry. It's because the average person goes, it's water resistant, so I don't have to worry about dropping it in the toilet anymore. Seriously, I don't know how, many, how so many people drop their phones in the toilet. It hasn't happened to me, and now that it's on video, it's probably gonna happen to me tomorrow, and I'm gonna be baffled. So, you know, have reasonable expectations, and don't get too upset when Acer releases a laptop made entirely out of hot glue. <laughs> Leave a comment if you want to see me try and do that. <laughs> if it's at Intel, it's just gonna start melting when it gets hot. So be aware that this is a niche product that will garner a lot of interest and hopefully orders from a very vocal minority of the market. There's enough of you guys and maybe me later on to keep a company afloat and make them fairly successful. But again, it's not gonna change the world, not 
everybody's gonna use it and not everyone's gonna follow suit as far as other companies go. So don't expect this to change the world. People like to get into habits. People don't like to change. So again, it's not gonna replace corporate machines, more than likely. There might be a few companies that wanna go with the whole we're green, let look at us kind of thing, but by and large, it's not going to because of the reasons I said before. And worst of all, because that's where big money lies and you know big OEM laptops like Dell, HP, Lenovo, and everybody else, they're gonna start breaking legs if you try and take away their corporate you know, market. <laughs> that's, that's where people get angry. You can ask Intel and AMD. The second Ryzen started, or Epic, started eating into the server market, Intel got serious. They got scared, they got upset, and they started clamping down whatever they could do. And that's what'll happen. And again, it's not gonna replace everybody's stuff. I also hear people asking about like a framework uh, phone or something of that nature, and that's definitely not gonna happen. We already have the Fairphone, and they've shown pretty much what the limit of that kind of product is. And why would you encourage somebody to come in like and try and steal market share from those guys? You know, they're trying their best and there's not, you know, there's not enough room in here for both of us kind of thing. So at the end of the day, I like the company. I like the concept. They've resolved a lot of my fears with the whole finances thing, thanks to Linus putting out a video. I'm a little bothered that they didn't come forth and put anything out themselves, but I understand using the world's largest tech YouTuber as a speaking device as a way to get your word out there. I get, I get that. Personally, again, I'm waiting on a V2 with literally any other CPU platform because everything coming out within the next year or two will be better and will hold up longer. So I want more cores. I don't need gaming performance. I have a desktop for that. But if I buy a laptop, I wanna use it for a decade because I want myself to last a long time. And you know, then I can just repair stuff as it goes. I break a hinge, buy a new hinge. I break a screen, I buy a new screen, whatever the case may be. The big thing too is I'm waiting on that marketplace to come out because I need to know how much that stuff will cost. Otherwise, I'll just go on AliExpress and buy crap for my Dell and tape it on. It's fine, it's fine, this is fine. Anyways, feel free to like this video or dislike it since that was all the rage last time. Uh, leave a comment, please be a little little nice. I, I, I read all of them, so it, it hurts sometimes, guys. <laughs> you guys are really mean. <laughs> but it's fine. Like the video, leave a comment, get subscribed, and, you know, check out the Discord and have a good day. <sighs> is that gonna hate you? Oh yeah, 100%, I'm in danger. <laughs>